It's my favorite time of year. There's that chill in the air. I can golf without burning up in the sun, but it's still not cold. And of course, we get to discuss our annual rarest camos topic. This year on the calendar, Modern Warfare 3, naturally. And let me tell you, this year had so many camos available to earn and grind out more than any other COD before. So naturally, we've got a few more to go over this year. Drop your thoughts as we go along. How many of these camos do you have for yourself? If any, how many perhaps did you just never know existed? Let me know your thoughts, but make sure to drop a like if you enjoyed the video and make sure to subscribe to stay up to date with all things COD. Black Ops 6's launch is upcoming in just under a month. So I'd love to have you in the community as we chase down 600,000 subscribers. But for now, let's take a look at the rarest camos in Modern Warfare 3. So when it comes to sheer quantity of who owns a camo, there's only a few that are literally restricted to X amount of players can end up having them. So let's start with some rare ones that aren't exactly that quantity wise, but if you weren't around for the very short limited window that you could earn these, you won't have the opportunity to get these again. Let's start with the gold face camo. This was the Saturday viewership reward for COD champs. This one was acquired by simply watching the COD champs live stream for three hours on that day of Saturday. This one was more obtainable than prior viewership reward camos of COD champs like the most recent one before this was Modern Warfare 2's camo, where that was a championship Sunday viewership reward, trying to bolster out the final match of the entire CDL season, but it was one that required, I believe, two hours of watch time last year. But the thing was, the entire broadcast last year was only like three hours or so because the New York subliners 5 0 the Toronto Ultra. So it appeared that for this one, they kind of took a look at that period of availability and saw that there was a bit of a risk of people missing out on it. And instead of putting it in a day where there could potentially be a three hour broadcast, they put it in a day with a full nine hour broadcast, which is nice. The camo itself takes aim at the same theme that was seen across some of the top two. 50 pattern camos in both multiplayer and in Warzone, but in a static capacity and a much heavier emphasis on the golden aesthetic, whereas others were a blackened design with an accent of the golden skulls. Not a bad camo, but was only available for a limited time. Another similarly fashioned viewership reward was one that was an interesting use of a time slot. The Bull Buzzkill camo is universal camo that was available as a reward for watching two hours of the Code Bowl 5, this year's Call of Duty Endowment Championship, where branches of various nations, armed services fought it out for the ultimate bragging rights. What's interesting is that this was immediately following the multiplayer reveal at COD next this year, so there was ample opportunity to be ready for this event and to either actively watch it or to be ready to tab it into another monitor and just get background progress for earning it. But it was an entirely separate event listing and only lasted four hours total, so to watch two hours total of that broadcast may have made this one tougher to acquire. The camo plays into the geometric designs we've seen a few times, but also has a relatively simple design scheme altogether. But a free camo no less, and because of that window to earn it is one of those ones I'd consider pretty rare. Next, a camo that you might not even know existed for a reason is the In the Crosshair camo, which was a daily login bonus reward. Now, we've seen daily login rewards a few times within COD in the last two years or so. Oftentimes, rewards leading up to the final day are smaller things, emblems, charms, XP tokens, and such, and then usually a blueprint for that overall reward. But the most recent outing of daily login bonuses saw the introduction of the In the Crosshair camo, which was on a very limited timer. The camo required you to log in on seven unique days, but only had a runway or entire duration of eight days total on the event. So you could only afford to miss one of those days of daily logins, which wasn't a whole lot of room to work with. Plus, the real kicker here was that it appeared the UI glitched in some capacity and in that eight day span was never rectified as players saw this actively pop up and you could track it in the COD HQ while other players like myself were not able to see this at all. There was no pop-up or prompt anywhere saying that it was actually something in the game. So while progress did track on those days, even if it didn't show up in the UI for you, it was just one of those things that was sort of hidden. And if you didn't know about it, when you found out about it, it was probably too late to earn all seven of those days. So maybe you have this one, maybe you don't, but it is indeed a rare camo for those handful of reasons. Now, it's one thing to have a camo available to earn that you can simply just log in or watch to get, but let's add another layer to the equation here. Limited time availability plus a very tough challenge. How about winning five Warzone matches in a row or 30 total in either Rebirth or Big Map respectively? Then putting yourself as a target for everyone in the lobby to see, but still taking down that lobby and getting the Warzone nuke. 
But just like last year, every season has introduced a new exclusive camo, sometimes two, depending on the map you're playing, that if you didn't complete the new contract on that specific map in that specific season, you won't have the ability to get these camos again. There's only one sort of exception for that, I think, which we'll get to in a second. The season one champion's quest reward was the acerbic royal weapon camo. This was available at completing the nuke on Urzikstan, and is a weapon camo that is more so just bright and vibrant, and reminds me a bit of nuclear waste per se, but isn't anything is too flashy over the top, or from the outside looking in, may not be something that looks like it's related to the nuke contract, but it was available in season one only. Season two introduced the Melty camo, which again, was for the Urzikstan big map nuke contract. This one did end up having a bit more that kind of pointed towards, hey, this is what you get for completing the nuke, as you end up seeing a bunch of the designations for Warzone and the Champion's Quest as that weapon camo pattern. This almost like graphite and red looking camo was available for the entirety of Season 2. Now, Season 3 came along and introduced two of these Champion's Quest rewards, one for both Big Map on Urzikstan, and then one additionally for Rebirth Island with the introduction, or rather reintroduction, of that into the Warzone offering. The Nuking Hazard camo was a purple, red, blue, black and white sort of almost paint splatter looking camo that ended up having the designations of the champion's quest on it while the engine lights on camo was the rebirth island champion's quest reward something that was a bit more blue and almost industrial looking if that makes sense but you ended up having two on offer for Season 3, something you'd also see happen again in Season 5, but we'll get to there in a second. Season 4 introduced the Hazardous Ruin camo, which was the Champion's Quest for Season 4 on Big Map on Urzikstan. This really followed the seasonal theme where it was the DNA bomb and all these sort of zombie-type introductions because of that sort of event in Pop-Off Power that was said to happen here in that seasonal cutscene. This animated camo kind of took it to that level, but was again only available for Season 4. Season 5 introduced the Evolution Forge camo on Big Map in Urzikstan and the Super Slick camo within Rebirth Island. The Evolution Forge camo, I honestly kind of thought was pretty cool. It was a vibrant, almost on fire effect, which frankly, I don't know if this is intended, if anybody else sees it, but for that Evolution Forge, I always think of like the nuke scene in the Terminator. That's the kind of vibe I get from that camo. And then the Super Slick, to me, reminded me of like an oil spill or something like that. Name kind of checks out with it, but a cool color combination of the almost iridescent pattern that we've seen in prior ranked plays, but in an animated capacity and a bit more freeform, I guess you could say. I feel like the iridescent camos are a bit more like rigid and defined, whereas this, again, looks like an oil slick. Now, the cool part about this one in particular, apparently you can still end up earning this. I personally haven't attempted this on Rebirth Island once again in Season 6, but because Season 6 only introduced the Gamma Storm camo for Urzikstan, not having one for Rebirth Island, into this season it's possible i'm wrong but i had heard that you can still get this which would be pretty cool if so now the gamma storm camo is the season six big map or urzikstan champions quest reward where this one is a sort of teal orange and like darker green aesthetic to it with a few skull icons and then the text of nuke crew on it which hails back to a few references made by raven some of their dev team apparel actually says nuke crew on it as well so it plays into this but it's again only available for season six and will likely be out of the way come season one and the integration with black ops 6. but that's the last of the timed or limited exclusive things here that were earnable in game or something free to get by simply just watching or having accounts linked the other two things that round out our sort of timed exclusives are unfortunately things you had to pay for and frankly also super overpriced royalty tiger was the first paid camo bonus that we saw in modern warfare 3 coming actually i think in the launch week or like the week after the launch of modern warfare 3 where it mimicked prior tiger camo patterns plus the mixture of like the level of flair of prior royalty camos that sledgehammer had done in the past but this camo wasn't animated but it was a camo that did change drastically based upon the lighting level meaning that if you were in a bright summer atmosphere or something like that in one of the maps it'd be bright and reflective in nature but others if it was like a darker moodier lighting like say underpass and in the darker shadowed areas of that it would almost in some cases glow in the dark if i'm not mistaken this was included as a bonus for the cod shops custom 141 satchel that cost around I want to say $70, but not to mention there was a limited quantity of those satchels and the camo redemption codes as well. So if you have this, 
it is a rare camo. Then the final camo of our limited in quantity and limited in terms of availability is Gold Cheetah. Another bonus from the COD shop where Gold Cheetah was a direct reissue of the Gold Cheetah camo from COD World War II, where it was that specific weapon prestige and mastery camo. But for the price point of this one, again, I believe it was like $100 as a bonus on the COD shop site. I can't remember off the top of my head what that was linked to in relation to a specific item or if you just spent $100 as your bonus. But for that price, if it's worth it, probably subjective but it was only available for a limited time and kind of steep in price now that said that's your limited time camos but let's talk about some hidden camos or hidden grinds that maybe you knew of some of these maybe you knew of all of them or maybe you didn't know about any of them but the hidden camo grinds these are my favorites easter egg quests long-standing endurance challenges things like that that won't tell you there's a challenge until you've actually completed it some of my favorites four of the five in this category can i believe still actually be done today though may not be around for too much longer but we'll touch on each of those potential asterisks as we get to them first up the welcome to the mainframe camo is one that's earned on rebirth island as a part of the hidden rewards associated with the map's return earlier this year this techie looking camo is meant to depict a cpu and motherboard plus have an accent mark of like a keyhole pupil of an eye where that design is a static camo it's not animated but i think it looks pretty cool it's got some wear and tear on the canvas of specific weapons so it's not going to be the cleanest camo compared to others like literally speaking it looks like there's like chips in the paint or something like that but it still looks good even as a static camo to unlock this one it will require 27 unique days of interaction with rebirth island bioscan locations spread around the map resetting each day I don't know that I've ever seen a specific time that this will reset if it's based on whatever time zone you're in if it's one static time like midnight pacific time or something like that but 27 unique days of hitting that bioscan will grant you this camo like I said to my knowledge this one still can be done but for how long that will last we're not entirely sure if Rebirth Island is still in the rotation come season one of the integration, or if the challenge is still active at that point even, we don't know for sure, but for the time being, until at least then, you can still progress it. Again, to my knowledge. Next, the Crimson Worm camo is an interesting one. I feel like I never saw anyone using this, and I also feel like with how little spotlight Fortune's Keep got, it might be a relatively unknown camo challenge. This one was associated with the Easter egg challenge to wake the dragon on Fortune's Keep. To do this, you had to collect multiple coins from the lookout stations by meleeing the stationary binoculars. Then you had to take those coins and deposit them at Bird's Nest on top of the vineyard main building and the radio tower by the coastline. Then you'd have to acquire a gas can to start the lighthouse beacon, but then stop it while rotating it so that it would bounce off those shards placed in the bird's nest. And once you did that properly, it would reflect the light from the lighthouse to the radio tower, to the vineyard, to the Fortunes Keep Castle, and then complete the challenge. This again, still is doable to my knowledge, but only when they actually decide to randomly include Fortunes Keep in the rotation. But with this being a camo that I feel like not many people went through the trouble to get this, and the fact that Fortunes Keep is now rarely in the rotation compared to, say, season two or three, I'd put this as a rare camo. Next, the Mark of the Survivor camo is a super flashy camo of almost like a rave in a camo, pulsating like crazy. But this one, probably is one of the more annoying camos to unlock. For this one, you had to complete the Unstable Rift Challenge in Modern Warfare Zombies. This required you to activate three obelisks scattered around the map, appearing randomly each match, where you had to get kills with certain ammo types to complete each obelisk. So, like if one required dead wire kills, you'd have to use a weapon with dead wire to get those completed. But after completing three, a portal for the Unstable Rift would appear, but visible to everyone on the TAC map. So you could do all that work, and somebody could take it right out from underneath you. But when you teleport there, you have to survive five waves of tons of zombies and bosses, but once you do, that camo is yours. This one is pretty cool, and again, because it is such a hassle, I feel like not many players, big picture, have this. I know a lot of people have covered it in YouTube videos on how to get it and everything like that, but I've certainly seen this one a lot more than others, but grand scheme of things, again, to the player population at large, you're probably an elite company if you do have this. Next, the Jack of All Trades camo is the most recent addition to this list. And being that it was only added with season six, this one's rare because I don't think many people, again, big picture, will even ever know this one exists. The challenge has no heads up or way to track it in menu or on your HUD, so you're not made aware of the existence of this challenge at all. There's no way to track it and see how far you are along until you complete it. That's when it will tell you that you did earn it. The camera requires you to get 1,000 kills in multiplayer or 7,000 kills in zombies with any aftermarket part equipped that can be as simple as the jack glassless optic attachment or any conversion kit of your choice i think there's like 50 aftermarket parts or something like that available within modern warfare 3 maybe even more but all you have to do is equip 
any number of those to any weapon and get a thousand kills in multiplayer or seven thousand kills in zombies and it's yours once you unlock that camo it's meant to mimic the 3d printed design of the weaponry of the aftermarket parts which honestly i think is pretty cool i always thought that aesthetic was awesome so to now be able to make any weapon look that way is pretty cool and then finally the synth bust camo was the only one that i think is entirely out of the question to earn again at the moment at least unless they reintroduce the get high parkour map this one is lost to the test of time unfortunately while there were two additional camos that were recently introduced with this the synth bust was the only one that was the result of a hidden quest on the map that wasn't super easy to earn if you didn't know about it but if you did it was pretty easy all you had to do was find all the golden coins hidden around this parkour map they're mostly hidden but audibly if you had a headset or something you could notice them as they sort of emitted a glowing hum sound but if you collected all of them and then reached the end of the parkour map instead of going to the start again you'd go through the portal and you'd reach the castle in which case the animated pink purple blue and black camo would be all yours with a sort of animated geometric netting and an animated sculpted bust rotating on that camo canvas honestly i thought it was a really fun camo but certainly has a lot going on so i understand why it might not be everybody's favorite camo perhaps if you're not into that kind of stuff but because of its hidden nature and the fact the map is no longer around this rounds out our rarest camos in that hidden grind category now one that I want to put on here just for simple grinding sake is the constellations end camo this is another super new addition here only added with season six but frankly isn't one that's so much rare in the terms of like it's only available for a limited period of time or it's a super hard quest or anything you have to do it it's just a dedication type thing it's a rare camo because I don't think the majority of players will end up going out of their way to end up getting these because unlike other camos mentioned in this video the constellations end is only per weapon it's the final weapon prestige camo meaning that you have to earn this on every single weapon that you want to use it on and that entire grind requires you to get the weapon to max level first then accumulate 900,000 weapon xp for that specific gun and by getting one trick molten obsidian and mercury camos along the way frankly I just don't think that especially with Black Ops 6's launch right around the corner I don't think that you'll see a whole ton of people grinding these out for multiple different weapons let alone every single one so for me I'm counting it in the rarest camos even if you have only one weapon with this on congrats because I think you made the short list I'd say for people that have this compared to the again player population at large now before we wrap up with camos that are statistically limited to a certain number and are partially limited time and perhaps the hardest grinds we've seen introduced in Modern Warfare 3 let's talk about a camo that you will probably never get the Tiki camo is a static camo that is just how the name suggests Tiki themed and a cool blue and white feeling to this camo but why can you or I never get this well it's an Activision employee exclusive camo back in like Modern Warfare 2019 we saw things like the Activision ambassador camos that were special camos for employees of Activision but also opened up to a few people of the community those were ambassadors the people that were high-ranking volunteers in the Activision community helping out with like support tickets forum upkeep and the like that program if I'm not mistaken was dissolved and now those exclusives only go to the devs of the game which I'm all for devs having some additional small things like a camo to show off the exclusivity of they worked on the game and this camo itself isn't anything too special in nature or anything too crazy that's like I need to have that camo but simply for the fact of the average Joe's like you or me we're never going to end up having that camo so that's one that I think absolutely is in the rarest category but there's probably more Activision employees with this redeemed than what we'll get into with the ranked camos now of course you do end up having the iridescent camo that is something that is the highest level that you can achieve without being in a very very small subset of players the number of players that have an iridescent camo from modern warfare 3 are probably in the thousands maybe tens of thousands across all seasons because you did have the ability to get an iridescent camo across season two of modern warfare 3 ranked play season three of resurgence for warzone ranked season five of modern warfare 3 ranked play and then season six once again here with resurgence warzone ranked once this season wraps up that's when you'll end up being credited with that but any of those if you ranked iridescent you got one of these but if you do have an iridescent camo congratulations because you are again on that short list of people that do have this compared to the player base at large but statistically the rarest camo that you can have within modern warfare 3 is any of the top 250 camos across season two of modern warfare 3 ranked season three of warzone resurgence ranked season five of modern warfare 3 ranked or again if they do fix it and it is something that does come with season six warzone resurgence ranked any of those four outings this is by far the rarest camo that you can have it's a combination of all those mentioned categories that we just ran through a limited time availability it's only available in that season of whatever mode you're playing a huge grind 
it is one of those things that even if you make it to the top, you can't stop. Otherwise, you can end up losing that place that you have. And it's severely limited in quantity. Top 250, as the name suggests, there's only 250 of those camos that are granted to players organically. Again, you probably have seen somebody with an unlock tool or something that you can use any of these. But if we're talking simply earning these truly, there's only 250 players each season that will get these across Warzone or multiplayer ranked. To have any of these, again, as we mentioned, you have to finish in the top 250 and ranked for either of those modes that you completed in. It's not like the rest of the ranked division camos like Crimson or Iridescent. If you did not finish in the top 250, you do not get that reward for the top 250, whereas any other division, you'd be credited for what the highest rank that you achieved was. So if you hit Iridescent but de-ranked back down to Crimson by the end of the season, you'd still end up with an Iridescent camo. That doesn't happen with the top 250. So with only 250 per season, how heavy of a grind it is to get into the top 250 and then stay there, this is by far the rarest camo that you can achieve in Modern Warfare 3 as a whole. So that concludes our rarest camos of Modern Warfare 3. Of course, if you want, you can add things to the camo list to make incredibly rare, like uniform Modern Warfare experiences through Warzone. Camos like your top 250 for sure are there. Things like your Serpent and Knight camo from DMZ last year that we talked about. Those are all super rare that there are more that go and make the rarest camos of Modern Warfare at large. But for Modern Warfare 3 in particular, those are the camos that I would say, if you have any of those, again, you're an elite company. So that is where we're going to wrap it up. Let me know your thoughts down below. Of course, there are other camos like all the event camos that are a limited time, but they were readily available by being XP events or something like that. The only one that I'd say is probably one that's like the rarest of those event camos is the magma camo, because I think that was like a million XP or something like that to earn. So not many people really went for that one because it was such a hassle. But subjectively, yes, there are a lot of limited time camos that you can maybe consider others rare. But for the sake of not putting a million camos and diluting the list a bit more here with that, these are what I'd say are the rarest camos in Modern Warfare 3. So let me know your thoughts down below. Do you agree with this list? Do you have any of these camos? Whatever the case, drop your thoughts. But if you guys enjoyed the video, do me a favor, drop a like on it. Of course, if you are new to the channel, make sure you subscribe so you don't miss a single thing. We're getting all things Modern Warfare 3, Black Ops 6 upcoming in just about a month's time, and more FPS content. I'd love to have you in the community. But for now, thanks so much for watching. Modest Espresso. I'll see you later. Take care and peace.